1995. I was at my desk, and an airplane crashed into my office. What I saw as I turned in my chair was a rolling ball of fire coming straight at me. 86% of my body was third-degree burned, so there was very, very little skin that was not burned in some way. I never dreamed at that time of treating burns. We were working on a mouse teratoma. That's a stem cell tumor. And people were enamored with uh, the idea at the time that you could learn a lot about embryogenesis by studying teratomas because they gave rise to all kinds of cell lines. I took the tumor, put it in culture, divided it up into cells that, uh, and identified different clones that would arise that had different types of morphology. Some of those looked like epithelial cells and so I selected those and tried to study them further. Each time we'd isolate a single cell and put it in culture, it died. It wouldn't do anything. But I had noticed that usually in the environment of those cells, there were fibroblasts. So I thought, maybe they like to have fibroblasts around, so we'll give them fibroblasts. These epithelial cells that looked flat and sickly and would take three or four days to undergo every doubling now would grow with a doubling time of about 16 hours and, and look bright and cheery, packed together. And in fact, when I suctioned and stained them, uh, I could see that they had stratified and undergone changes that a pathologist friend of Howard said, this looks a lot like epidermis. And that's what then led us to say, let's try normal human epidermis with this method. And so when we tried the experiment, it worked beautifully. So we now were the first to discover how you could make human creatinocytes grow in culture. That's an epidermal cell, generally speaking, in the surface of the, of the skin. If you know you can grow human creatinocytes, you ask yourself what you can do with them. Could they be used to reconstitute epidermis in burned people? I had some friends who referred me to Nicholas O'Connor, who was in charge of burn unit at the Peter Bent Brigham Hospital. And so we decided to do a pilot study. He took a small biopsy from an adult who had burns of his arm. We took that to MIT in the laboratory, cultured the cells, expanded them, and brought them back in a taxi, and Nick O'Connor applied them to the surface of the arm. And it became evident by about 10 or 11 days that, that this grafted, cultured uh, skin uh, was working. In 1982, we started doing it at the Shriners Burn Unit, and they had lots of patients who were massively burned. A couple of brothers were burned out in Wyoming and they called up the shrine and said could we take them because these uh, two brothers were unfortunately burned over about 95 percent of their body surface area so it was highly unlikely they were going to survive anywhere other than at the shrine and with this method. I was not at all prepared for that kind of enterprise. I had no dedicated staff here. I had some postdocs but I, I really had no choice, I had to try. And so he took the boys in and we then started to grow cultures for them. In the meantime, I went to the hospital to see the boys and I had never seen anything like that in my life. And yet, in as desperate a condition as they were, one of the boys, when he was taken to the operating room, he said to the nurse, please don't let me die. So that had a big effect on me. And so they came early in June sometime, and we spent the whole summer uh, grafting them. And Howard's lab had to turn out hundreds and hundreds of these grafts. And both brothers survived. We eventually got them all covered, and they went back to Wyoming. We 
we basically used Howard's whole lab and lab personnel, and they were completely devoted to this. But, the, but at the end of this, this episode, they were completely exhausted as well. So that's when we started this company, Biosurface Technology, which took over the whole process. And then later, that company was absorbed by Genzyme, and that's why they're the ones who do it. Approximately 100 to 200 patients a year are addressed by epicells. Uh, in the United States, it's fairly well accepted as part of the burn surgeon's armamentarium. I was a 36-year-old mother, wife, and secretary. I was burned from head to toe, or from head to the top of my feet. My toes are not burnt, and they put me in a drug-induced coma for four months. But during this time is when I received all the epicell. I got to meet Dr. Green, and it was just such an honor because... If it wasn't for him, I'd be dead. I would have died, and my children would not have been able to have a mother to adulthood.